to Command and Conquer Red Alert 3. It's been a while, I know. I was in Japan there for a little while, and I got stuck playing Skyrim. A quick update on Skyrim Special Edition. Uh, it is pretty much the same game. Um, very little has changed. Uh, they've cleaned up some of the art styles and all that stuff, um, but mainly the biggest part of it is that it is a better setup for mods. Um, much better setup for mods so much easier to do um, basically if you've got it on PC or if you've got Skyrim on PC already you've probably got this for free through Steam so good on you if you've got it on console um, if you've got Skyrim originally on console um, then you're probably gonna have to pay out to get the updated version uh, the special edition so mm, not sure if it's worth buying it again considering it's you know it's just for mods so it's up to you guys. Where the hell did you come from, Lydia? Anyway, I thought it might be time for me to earn that PC Gaming Master Race tag that I've been using for so long and review a game that's only playable on the PC. By now, many of you might be thinking, you smarmy bastard. This also came out on the Xbox and the PlayStation. And you'd be right. And wrong. See, real-time strategy games are keyboard and mouse games. Sure, you can technically play them with a controller, but you can also technically play the harp with your genitals and have similar success. Controlling a battlefield just requires a lot more functionality than a controller can provide without simplifying the gameplay significantly, which I guess is also technically an option, but then you end up with an abomination touchscreen real-time strategy, like Red Alert for the iOS. Ugh. Anyway, real-time strategy isn't a broad genre. There's basically a rulebook on how to bake them, and it was written <laughs> by the Command & Conquer team, um, back with Dune 2. Uh, of course, that was back when they were Westwood instead of EA. Um, so, yeah. Sure, there are some sub-genres and some games that bend the guidelines a little bit, uh, with varying results. Slower versions did pretty well. Good old Age of Empires. Some took some risks and came out on top, a la Homeworld. I'll review you later. But some took some further risks and messed it all up. Isn't that right, Commander Conquer 4? <laughs> but anyway, just for a quick overview on the way that Red Alert th 3 played out with Con Command & Conquer 4, considering 4 was right after 3. Uh, 3 got some significantly better reviews. Uh, there's a good reason for that, because it follows the rules to a T. Uh, there were pretty much no risks taken when it comes to that. Now some of you might be like, hey, there was totally some risks in there, you know, they got some naval battles and some other random stuff. No, it is it is all the same. It is effectively the same game as Command & Conquer 3, just with naval stuff, but Red Alert 2 already had naval stuff going on. There was a couple of units, and allowing you to build more units in the water is sort of natural progression there. Basically, if you like real-time strategy, you'll probably like this game. It is, it follows that genre perfectly. Like, it is, it is top of the line real-time strategy. Um, I mean, you know, most people who play real-time strategy don't really play it for that element. Normally, they have, well, there's, there's a lot of good reasons to play real-time strategy. Most people like to completely destroy their enemies. Um, in online scenarios. Uh, unfortunately, EA shut down the servers for Red Alert 3. So, yeah. Oh, but, you know, we've got a community-driven Command & Conquer online service, so, you know, the community saved us on that one. But, still, I don't really... <sighs> yeah, I could just play another game, really. <laughs> But enough about all that. We're here to review Red Alert 3. I just wanted to give a little perspective when it comes to that. Um, so, when I said the gameplay was acceptable, 
it it really is you, you know it's just it's just a real-time strategy game like like any other um but of course the reason why i don't generally like real-time strategy games is because i like the story uh most of them that's generally the deal i mean of course i wouldn't be able to get through real-time strategy games if the gameplay was too simple or too bad you know like some but if the story's not there and they've got all the other elements of real-time strategy then I might as well just play something else you know like there is plenty of real-time strategy games on the market these days especially with steam being out so red alert 3 sort of had to really break the mold for it to be better than other games i could just play in fact i could legitimately just still play red alert 2 these days so why why would i need red alert 3 if it wasn't amazing and really it's not the the story is really bad like proper bad proper proper bad now some of you may be thinking hey red alert's supposed to have a cheesy story right it's supposed to be pre b grade movie level and yeah i mean two was pretty b grade but red alert three was beyond that it it rubs your face in it and rips off the rest of the franchise um, and basically it doesn't fit together story-wise let me run it down for you so the Soviets go back in time and stop the Allied forces from wreaking their day um, guessing that this is at the end of Red Alert 2 rather than Red Alert 1 because it's Red Alert 3 so that's that's cool but anyway they go back in time and they get rid of Einstein um, much like the way that Einstein got rid of Hitler in Red Alert 1 yeah that's totally what happened look it up so the Soviets do this and supposedly as mentioned in the, the cinematic is, is to stop them from having the chronosphere um, and effectively they should also have lost the prison tech and the mirage tech which they gathered in Red Alert 2 they still have that technology in this game yeah it doesn't doesn't really make sense does it and then uh if this is following off uh, the same lines being a sequel you know and temporal the temporarily at the same time as red alert 2 because of that whole time travel thing then it should be set back at the 70s so when the japanese have better technology than they could have ever had when Einstein was around what it doesn't make any sense they've got nanotechnology but but the I just <sighs> anyway I guess this is kind of a world with time travel technology so really it, it doesn't really make sense ever but that's that's not the worst of it like seriously the, the B grade acting in this and the B grade storytelling is, is really not just no like they have some fantastic cast here they've got Tim Curry they've got Jonathan Price they've got George fucking Decay in this and they let it just turn into this massive bad cliche it, to the point where they were ripping off other parts of the the storyline like this this time with it where they're in, on Easter Island for for no reason where that's that's what happened in Yuri's Revenge same with they've got heads that shoot laser beams out of their eyes the the, the American president's heads shoot laser beams out of their eyes what and then like the the president of the United States was was a robot created by the Japanese holy crap I mean I guess it's kind of what it's kind of how I feel about President Trump I mean that joke's probably not gonna be that good if, if President Trump was elected but hey you know 
and then David Hasselhoff was the vice president of the United States there uh, for a bit. So, yeah, um, they, this could have been so much better. It, it really could have. They had so much to work with when it came to Red Alert 2. And they had time travel, you know? Time travel was one of the easiest ways to get around any story element that you don't like, you know? Like the fact that Red Alert 1 and 2 uh, prequels to the original, the actual Command and Conquer series that supposed to lead up into the, f the forces of Nod getting controlled. Red Alert 1 actually had Kane in it, so it it's supposed to lead into that. So the time travel thing, you know, it it could get around that stuff because you just say, oh, okay, it it all fits in because time travel. So you don't have to worry about certain elements. But that doesn't mean you get to steal all the ideas out of a game and then just just do it again in the sequel. That's that's some uh, that's some Call of Duty shit right there. If you haven't figured it out by now, I'm a real stickler for story, and why shouldn't I be? You know, story is the great divider when it comes to real-time strategies. You know, they're, they're basically the same game with different colors and textures. Um, you know, there's varying degrees, as I said, of, of different types of real-time strategy. Um, mainly, the division is, is is on how you get resources and uh, the buildings that you make. Um, and sometimes you don't even make buildings, you know? So, it's, but it's all the same feel to it. Like, it doesn't take much to, to move between those games. Um, so the story really holds it, you know, like Warcraft 2 and 3, they had fantastic story to them, T to the point where <laughs> we even tried to push it out with, with World of Warcraft. Um, but Riddler 3 just, just fell short with that. So, I mean, it passes the test for being a real-time strategy, but in my opinion, it was one of the first nails in, in the Command and Conquer franchise that sealed it eventually with CNC4. It is by no means unplayable, but it's definitely not on my list of games that you have to play. In fact, you probably shouldn't. It's on my list of games that you don't really have to ever, like, you should probably stay away from. So I guess my rating for it is probably around 5 or 6 out of 10. I mean, you know, it's... It's average, I guess we can call that average halfway decent. Um, seriously though, just just play a different game, you know. Command and Conquer three, Red Alert two, um, Warcraft three, uh, the myriad of games on Steam these days. See, that's the same game. 